So where I would like you to go is I would like you to actually just go to Entrobase. And so this is entrobase.warwick.ac.uk. Um, and um, I have a link to it here. So I'm setting up a new link to Entrobase. So once you have gone to entrobase.warwick.ac.uk, you should see something similar to this, but not as um, many genera. The ones we will concentrate on today is Yersinia down here for me. I would like you to just click on database home. And so hopefully you will get to the screen. If you don't get to the screen, we have a problem. Now, the first thing is you are all um, users of Entrobase. I checked this yesterday. So you need, if you're not seeing your username up here, you need to click on that down button and log in. So you need to be able to see your username here or you won't be able to do many of these things. So actually what we're doing right now is a very useful thing. So let me talk about this whole buddy system. On the left menu here, once you are into Entrobase, you will see my buddies is one of your options. And so let me explain to you this buddy system. Entrobase has public data and it has private data. So for example, private data are genomes that you have uploaded and that you have not yet made public. You have a future release date on them. So uh, one of the things that is private is your metadata and your um, uh, genomes that are pre-release. They are private in the sense that you can download them or you can download any trees that include them, but nobody else can download them unless you make them a buddy. And so if you make people your buddies, you can share things with them that nobody else can see. And so here I have a serial as one of my buddies. I have Javier as one of my buddies, but I don't have Mikhail yet as one of my buddies. So I will add Mikhail now. Um, Mikhail. And when I click on him and do add buddy here. So now adding this user gives them permission to download all genomes, genotypes, metadata, and workspaces that belong to you, including genomes that are not yet released. I click on okay. And Mikhail is now my buddy. At the moment, he does not have editing rights on any of this. To give him editing rights, I have to click on this checkbox. And once I've done that, Mikhail will now be able to edit anything I am sharing with him. Um, but I'm not sharing anything with him yet. We will come back to this in a moment and I will share something with Mikhail afterwards. I'm just doing this to show you how you add a buddy. If you want, you can click on this again, remove the editing rights, but there's no way to delete a buddy because Entrobase doesn't have that implemented yet. Um, so what else can you do with a buddy? What you can do with a buddy is you can also share things called workspaces and trees that you have set up for yourself. And so that's what we will be looking at is how you set up workspaces and trees. And then once you have them set up, you can share them with your buddy. What you can also share with a buddy is user-defined fields. And we'll get into that as well. And this is an important part of uh, what you can do with Entrobase, this private public domain. When you are writing a publication and you want to share these trees or user-defined fields with the whole world and make them public, you can do that as well. 
Um, and we'll get into that in a moment as well. So I'm going to go back to Entrobase. If you click up here twice, you should get back to the main Entrobase window. Okay, just click on, here we go. This is the window you should have been seeing. Now, this jobs here is jobs is uh, assemblies. These are when you've uploaded uh, reads and you're waiting for them to be assembled. Curate strains, I've never worked with this, but it's only the strains that you have uploaded. So you have a selection of everything that you have uploaded. I have not uploaded anything to uh, your CINE database. I have zero strains that are mine. As an administrator, I can still curate them, but they're not my strains. They're just still public strains. But the ones that are most important are search strains and load workspace. I will start with search strains. So if you just click on search strains, I'd like you to do this. Um, you end up with this window. Now, this is a very powerful search engine that lets you search on metadata or lets you search on experimental data or, or a combination of them. And so to explain what sort of things we have, I will just take the latest 200 strains that are in the Yosemite database. You can change the number here. Um, and this is different from everything else on the window. You don't click on submit, you click on latest. You could also click on my strings, which I don't have, or all strings. Actually, let's do with the latest 200. Uh, there's a uh, few enough strains in Introbase for your Cinea. You can just click on all strains to get everything. Um, before we do this though, there are some things in here that you can choose. Substrains, we'll get into this at some point, but basically you do not see substrains at all unless you have clicked on this here before you load them. You don't see failed assemblies at all unless you click on this before you um, uh, show them. Legacy data is 7 uh, gene MLST data. You will not, you will see it unless you ignore it. I'm going to ignore all legacy data. Um, and then I click on latest 200. Okay, we yes. have two, two windows here. There is this um, bar in the middle, which you can move around. Um, the left window is metadata. This is what was entered either in the public domain and then parsed from short read records or full genomes in the NCBI or uploaded by users and then they filled in the metadata. This is experimental data on the right. The default on experimental data is assembly stats, statistics. You can choose what you see if you go to view in this upper menu, you can choose which columns you want to show. Show hide columns, click them on, click them off so that you can uh, concentrate on something you want. You can move the location of columns. So species is here as a default, but I've decided I wanna have species next to name. You can drag these bars here when it turns into this sort of a narrow and make them bigger or smaller as you want. If you go to the right, these are things that have been uploaded by users. That's why it's called uploaded reads in data source. These are public uh, genomes, short reads. Those are the accession codes. And if you want to see more details, you can go into sample, click on this, and it opens a new browser window with the original data in NCBI. Um, if you go back here, 
you, this is the project that that sample is part of. So if you click on here, you get uh, a link to all of the short reads that were part of that project. And in this case, it's only one. Sometimes it will be thousands. So you can go straight from Entrobase into the original data by clicking on these links. Over here, you have the data was entered, the data is going to be released. This is something that Entrobase relies on, but you will probably never use, the so-called barcode. Every entry has a barcode. We have barcodes for multiple things. Um, barcodes, barcodes are unique designators for a genome entry or a 7-gene MLST entry. We also have other barcodes for the genomes. Over here at the far right, you have the assembly barcode. So this identifies the genome and this identifies the entry. Now, some of these are a little bit tricky. This is a multiple field, source. If you click on this, you will see that source consists of niche type and details. And um, these are on, you can't change any of them unless you go on, okay, that's this first thing. If you want to change anything or see details on some of them, you have to go into edit mode. Basically, as a curator, you can edit anything, but your normal user can only edit things that belong to them. I'm going to go into this. Why don't you try this and see if you can open one of these things the way I am. You will see if you are curators or not. And once I have clicked on edit mode up here and it's lit up with this blue thing, then I can click into this and now I can actually make changes. And what you can see now is that this was called an aquatic animal. These are the options, nothing else is allowed. And um, one of the IT people would have to add to this drop down list for additional things to be shown there. The source type, in this case, is fish. It could be bovine, it could be bovine antelope. There's a whole bunch of things here. Yersinia is not as clean as some of the other databases. So there are things here that maybe should be changed. And in this case, somebody had Oncorhynchus mycus, which doesn't look right to me, but you could look it up in Wikipedia and see whether it's right or wrong, whether it really is a fish. And so German is convinced that a fish is an aquatic animal. So that's why his parser has called this an aquatic animal. If you disagree with this as a curator, you can change it and click on OK. So let me change this and show you what happens. Nonsense. Okay, I have now changed this. It makes it yellow. It says nonsense in here. If I leave this window, it will disappear. If I want to save this, I have to go up here to this thing that looks like hard drives and hover over it and it says upload changes. I will click on that. And Entrobase says two records have been updated in your Cinea. One of them, I don't know why it thinks the barcode has been changed. I haven't changed it. Um, and oh, barcode 12, your Cinea rookery. It's only one record. Um, but I'm now going to go back to this and get rid of my nonsense. It goes yellow again, I save it again, and once it responds, and only after it responds.
Interesting. Is any of you changing it at the moment? Ah, here it is. So now it's only updated one record. Now this is back to where it was. So as a curator, you are responsible for not messing this up. Um, you can change, this is the default field. If you do a click on source, uh, that doesn't work, sorry. Do a right click on this, select display field. You can choose if you want the default or source niche, for example, or source details. If I change the source details, we go back to the original data as it was in the public domain. If you click right click again and select display field and do default, the default is normally, I think, niche, I'm not sure. We can check this wild animal niche, yeah, that's default. The next one is location. This is also a multiple field. In this case, it's showing it red because China should be in Asia, but somehow it was entered as being China only. So I will now make this correct. I will make it Asia. And I will save it. Um, you don't need to worry about things like this. Um, now this is odd. Why do we have a Yersinia in here, which the species is supposed to be, oh, this is a mistake, this is not a Yersinia. This is a contaminant. Yeah, if you check the first column, it should be for QC. Yes. This failed quality control because it is not a Yersinia at all. And so I'm surprised. Why did we see this German when I had clicked on data um, and I did not click on failed assemblies? Um, it's, it's not a failed assembly. It is a successful assembly, which is wrong. So I will now do something with this because I don't like serratia liquefations in database. And so I'll show you how to do this. So since I am an admin and you are a curator and I'm in editor mode, I can see tools. If I click on the drop down for tools, I can do delete selected strings. If you're not an admin, you can't do this. If you're not a curator, you can't do this. So I'm just gonna get rid of this. Are you sure you wanna delete this? Yes. Um, and then save it. Oh, okay. So, okay, it's deleted, it's gone. Now, this one, it doesn't like either because Yersinia entrocolitica is only 35%. And we don't want anything that's only 35% in there. It has also failed QC. And I see no reason to have something in our database that is 35%. So I'm going to get rid of that as well. Normally, I never do this unless I happen to run into it by accident. Some of this other stuff is really lousy here. Look at this. This is supposed to be, oh, uh, this is probably Kraken problem. This is calling it a Yersinia Fredericksenii, but it was listed as a Yersinia vastinensis, which was previously um, a Yersinia Fredericksenii. So that's probably okay. It's just uh, they didn't know what it was. Um, no, where was it? I'm somewhere else. It just doesn't have a species here. Um, here it is. It was this one. They call uh, this was called a Fredericksenii by Kraken, and instead it's a Vastinensis based on um, um, a higher CC. We get to this later, and so I'm just that doesn't change. That's fine. 
Um, this one, I'm not sure. It also failed QC. We might as well get rid of that at the same time. Um, tools <clears throat> selected. Mark, can I ask you what exactly does it mean when it says uh, Yasinia 35%? Does that mean that it's... Kraken. Kraken has found that 35% of the reads no, um, in that short read sequence were for Yersinia uh, entricolytica, and 65% were from something else, okay. which was not a Yersinia. Okay, thank you. And so it failed QC. So, and this one here failed QC, it never even assembled as far as I can see. Mm -hmm. um, Jeremy, shall I just run it again? Mm, it's quite possible that it just uh, does not run. Uh... Let's try it. This one failed QC, but it never assembled. Let's find out if it even, no, it just never assembled. It can't do anything with it. So one possibility is that it, it just forgot it. So we're going to run it again. Assemble selected. Give it another chance. Fine. So what you're seeing here is things that you can do as an editor and other people can, but you can only do them when you're in edit mode. Let us talk about experimental data. So we have these cracking results here. What else do we have? To find out, you have to use the drop down box. So we have McNally 7 gene. So this is the system that Alan McNally set up for all your Cinea. And we took over from um, uh, uh, PubMed. And so this is now the primary McNally uh, 7 gene scheme. And this is the ST, and these are the individual alleles for those seven genes. And we have the seven gene scheme that uh, Mikhail and I and Elizabeth Carniel uh, set up. Um, and this is the ST there, and those are the seven allele numbers. Now, we no longer accept ABI sequences at all for anything in Entrobase, which is why we do not have the E. coli from Asa Van Briesen here, because they still accept seven gene sequences. And the reason we don't accept them is too many of them are wrong. But we call the seven gene alleles and expand the MLST scheme based on the genomes. And so that's what you're seeing up here. Annotation, it doesn't look like very much. If you click on the I symbol, um, you will end up, what do you end up with, German? You end up with the annotation? It shape out. But if you want to have the annotation, if you click on this symbol, which looks like an arrow, it will download it into your downloads folder. So you can get a GFF annotated genome out of this. You can get a GBK annotated genome out of this. Just to show you, I'll click on each of these. Now there's a trick here. And this is that they are using the assembly barcode designation here. So if you want to correlate this to Entrobase, you have to realize that it's this barcode and not the other barcode, because this is a genome barcode we have. And it, they have been downloaded into my downloads folder which in Windows is a standard downloads folder. I'm not sure where it does this on a Mac. Laura, do you know where it lands on a Mac? Uh, downloads folder as well, usually. Okay, so let's look at it. It's a gzip file. And since I have um, uh, an unzipper here, and within that gzip file, um, it has the entire annotation. 
So this is an annotation in gene bank format. And the other one is an annotation in GFF format. Um, and so this is for bioinformaticians, um, but if you need the sequence, you can get it that way as an annotated sequence, annotated at the whole genome level. The other way you can get that sort of data is download selected assemblies, in which case you get it as a FASTA file. So if you did these two here and do data, download, down selected assemblies, uh, may I have a question? Uh, yes, please. Because uh, to me, and I think to some of my colleagues too, when uh, we select several uh, en entries and we click on download assemblies, it's kind of, I'm seeing for you, it downloads, it will download them all at the same time. But for us, it kind of opens some window and we have to accept like every time for downloading. I think that having to accept each one individually may be a function of the particular browser that you're using and or the settings within that browser. Yes, uh, basically, uh, I think this works best in Chrome. Uh, so you... yep. The result is a faster file. The other result is a faster file. Let's look at it. Faster, uh, open the text pad here. This is what you get. It's a standard FASTA file of all of the individual contexts. The trick here is that the name of that FASTA file, your DA5767AA is the name over here. So if you need, if you want to know what it is, Actually, let me go into the next step and then this will maybe make more sense. What I'm going to do now is show you how you download metadata and other data now. And so what we do now is we do um, data, save to local file. Doing this takes everything in the window, which has 192 entries, takes everything in the window and saves that into uh, a file, which is in CSV format for Excel, but you will have much better results if you give it a name with text. Um, I'm gonna call it test.text. Um, it saves it to the downloads folder again. Um, if you then go into Excel, Um, the reason I'm doing it this way is because if you give it as a CSV file, Excel will open it automatically, but it will turn anything that looks like a date into a date uh, uh, format and mess everything up for you. So that's why I insist on always calling it a text file, which is not the default. The default would be a CSV file. Um, and then you have to do some tricks with um, Excel um, that you have to tell it that you're looking for a text file. Once you've told Excel to look for a text file, it will find it and it opens it uh, and gives you this menu. It's delimited, it's tab delimited, and now you should choose all of your columns and make them all text and then Excel will not mess it up for you. Having done this, you now have exactly what we were looking at, including this last column with the assembly numbers in it. So you can now see that this your DA5767AA underscore AS is the assembly barcode. And the last thing we opened was exactly that, DA5767AA. So that is how you know what the genome is associated with. Does that help you, Guillaume? Yeah, we'll try things.
Okay. Um, this makes it extremely powerful. I only downloaded 192, but uh, I could download, and we have done this, 250,000 and put them all into Excel. Now, let us find something here we want to change because I want to show you how you change things as a curator. So, okay, China. Remember, first I'm going to get rid of everything except these three, just to make life simpler for us. Okay, I've changed one of them to Asia, but these two were still in the original format. So I'm now going to change these to Asia as well in the Excel file. Now, it, I could have done this by hand. I could have clicked on each of them, gone into that particular field, typed in Asia, done uh, okay, and then saved it all. But if I want to do 500 of them, it would take me a long time. Doing it this way in Excel, you can sort of do whatever you want. Now, to make my life easier, well, let me explain some of these fields to you. The Uber strain is there because sometimes you have multiple copies of the same, gene, same strain, multiple genomes of the same strain. And so, for example, we have a paper right now submitted to PLOS Genetics in which we have uh, 250 copies of a lab strain that the genomes are there. And that would be 250 entries. And instead, what I have done to make life easier to understand is I chose one of them as a representative. That is the Uber strain and 249 substrains. And then nobody sees them unless they want to see. And the Uber strain designation is another barcode for all of those, including the top strain, but each has a unique barcode for each entry. And, um, but the barcode is the one we use. So we don't need Uber strain and we don't need name. All we need is barcode. Let's check the species, make sure there's no problems with this. Yeah, that's fine. That's past this. Data source, all of this is going to be fine. The only thing we want to change here is Asia. So I'm get, uh, getting rid of all this as well. And just to make sure I don't make any mistakes, I'm going to get rid of everything else. Okay, so what I'm left with is this. Barcode, continent, country. I'm now going to save this back to the downloads folder, save it as a text file, but call it test.update, UPD. Now this is a trivial example, and I wouldn't normally do this. This is too much uh, time loss. So I'm just showing you how you can edit things. Um, so we've saved this little file now. Uh, do you want to keep using it? We close this, uh, we close Excel, and now we go to this magic thing here, load modified file. Can you see that? It looks like a file folder. And that gives me a browser. I choose test update.txt, the file we use is saved as a text file, open. And it asks, what should it be using as an index? You can use either barcode or the accession. I'm using barcode. It gets more complicated if you're using the accession. And I do OK. This then loads those three sets of data, independent of what was on the screen before. It has. China in yellow because they're different. If there's no change, it doesn't do anything. It will not accept missing, it will not accept empty, block, uh, empty cells. So if you simply delete something in the Excel file and give it an empty cell, it won't do anything with it. This is not saved until I go here and do my upload changes again. 
And then uh, if I do that, it's done. Two records have been updated. So those are now all China and Asia. Let us keep going with data here. We had annotation. I don't know how to work with whole genome MLST. German, can you explain to people what this is? Uh, whole genome MST, well, you can use it to build a tree or uh, at the end of you can- Okay, so that's uh, new to me. I, 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 didn't, I didn't know you could build a tree. What sort of a tree can you build with whole genome MLST? It's sensing, labor joining, or uh, just use MS tree, the uh, allele based tree. Allele based tree, except it's leaving out missing data. Okay. Yeah. What does this I do for you? Uh, it gives you a list of the genes that is present in the genome. Uh, what you can do is if you right click and you can save uh, all the allelic file. Now, right click on the ST uh, column. So, right click on the on the eye. Yeah, yeah, right click. Okay. Yes. Download analytic profile. Okay. In which case you'll get a tab delimited uh, list of all the audios. And it can be easily converted into a present method. Okay. The other thing you have here is an ST number. This is an ST number at the whole genome level. So this is for sake of completeness. I don't think any of you will want to work with this. Let's forget it for the moment. Our MLST is using the data um, on PubMLST. Um, they are the master and Entrobase is the slave on this. So any new RST data um, is coordinated with PubMLST automatically. And it has the same sort of thing. This one will be simpler. There's only 52 alleles or whatever in it. Um, it has an allele number, an RST number, and then it has a species according to RMLST. Uh, we don't work with RMLST anymore. We used it for a long time, um, and we still use it if we want to pull out representatives. So it's an intermediate way of getting representatives of a large data set. And I would still use it for that, but we have stopped using it for any sort of population genetic analysis. What we use for population genetic analysis exclusively is CGMLST. Um, now, it looks similar to the other one. If you click on this, again, you get all of the little, not as many as for whole genome. And then the same way it would work if you do a right click, you could download the allelic profile uh, or you could download the allelic profile um, for selected only. To get selected, you have to go back here, go into this checkbox and then select here. Each of them gets an ST number. What is crucial here is if they differ in terms of which genes have an allele profile, they get a different ST number. So this includes missing data. Missing data is scored as minus one. And so if you have a minus one in any of the uh, gene loci, in a different gene than in another uh, genome, they have a different ST number. And so this is a serious problem for many programs. We spend a lot of time making sure that we can handle missing data. And the way we handle it is HC0. HC0 is indistinguishable for the alleles that have been called. And if some alleles have been called in one genome and not called in another one, they are simply ignored. And so we assign to an ST number where everything is indistinguishable and we ignore the missing data. So in this case, this is all pestis. They all have this HC0 underscore 3123 designation. I will now show you something which is extremely powerful before I go on to the other categories. This right click. Um, Laura, can you do right clicks on a mouse, on, on a Mac? 
Uh, I think I do control or shift, depending on the keyboard. To do okay. The, to do so are, are, is anybody else here using a Mac? Yeah, you, you can do right clicks. It depends on whether you use, if you're using the, the mouse pad, you have to hold two fingers on it and click. Uh, if you have an external mouse, then it's just a normal right click. Do a right click on this. And you, oh, everywhere in Entrobase, there's magic when you click, do a right click. Most of the important functionality is only there with a right click. If you're uncertain, try and see if a right click will help you. So in this case, when you're in a CGMLST, you can do a right click and select all. So let's select them. It doesn't work, German. They're not selected. Yeah, select all only works in uh, uh, left hand. Okay, you've just found a bug in this. If we do a right click here and do select all, it works. If we do a right here, click here and do unselect all, it, it works. If we do it here, nothing happens. In contrast, you also have find ST. And this is the part that is really powerful. If we are in this window, it says 3123HC0 and do a right click and then get at this level is the one you want to use. Get at this level, we'll go back to Entrobase and get everything that is HC03123. Since this is pestis, there will probably be a lot of them. And the point is you can do this at any of these hierarchical clustering levels. So that all of a sudden you are able to find groups of strains that are related genetically at the core genome for any level you want. Between HC0, okay, I was wrong. There are only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine things that are 3123. Firstly, they're all Yersinia pestis, makes me feel better. Interestingly, they're all from 2018 and all from China. State laboratory of pathogens and something, biosecurity, uh, China, but this is the Beijing Institute of Microbiology and Epidemiology, also in China, um, since it's Beijing. Um, in China, these three have information. This is from someplace called Aaron Hot City with a, a latitude, longitude on it. Um, now we want to change this. The reason we want to change this is this is based on Google. And so Paul Brown is setting up an open street maps uh, version of this because in China, they can't use Google. And once there's an open street maps thing there, they will be able to use this. But if we go back, we, oh, there it is. It's um, right on the border to Mongolia. Um, so in this case, these are all in the public domain because they have SRR numbers. Um, the information here is, China Ehrenhaut, it's coming from this Marionis unguilica from the liver. Um, in this case here, there's no information that was able to be parsed. So if we look at it, it's Mongolia. It's no longer China. Um, it's from a, um, a black rat. Um, National Center for Zoonotic Diseases. Interesting things are all from 2018. Um, and if you wanted to, they're identical. There's no point in making a tree. They're indistinguishable. There's no difference at all between these strains. So what else does this tell us? I need to give you an introduction to hierarchical clustering. Let me show you something Laura's been working on. Okay, this is an overview of hierarchical clustering for, um, for all of Escherichia. 
120,000 genomes or more. Um, and at the highest level of hierarchical clustering, you split the other species and subspecies of Escherichia. So each of these circles here is an HC2350 group. And this is Escherichia coli itself. Within that, you have an intermediate level whose numbers are not being shown here, which is AC2000. And within those AC2000 clusters, which are these or, uh, orangey things, you have AC1100 clusters. So this is an HC2350, HC2000, HC1100. This is hierarchical clustering at three levels. If we now go back to this window, we show you 10 levels here in, in your CINIA. HC 1520, 1490, HC 600 is um, the same. We think this is a, an ST complex. German, what are you using for species level 1490? Yes, 1490. So this would be the species level, which would be actually for your Cine pseudotuberculosis. So if we wanted to do that, we wanted to get all pseudo TB and similis and Korean group and pass this. You click in here and do get at this level on the AC 1494. Um, okay, and now we have 2267. And as you can see, some of them are pestis and some of them are pseudo TB. Um, and so in principle, if we wanted to, we could immediately do a tree on core genome MLST for all 2267 entries in entrobase from the Eucinia pseudo tuberculosis complex, just by going to a right click on AC1490. So you, you might ask the question, how do you do a tree on this? And what is it based on? Go to the left, the tree is based on HC0. You don't have any other options here. It's based on the allelic differences for HC0 for everything in the window. And the way you make that tree is you go to this symbol here, which is our symbol for a grape tree. And it says create MLST grape tree. And if you click on that, you have the option of giving it a name. So I am going to give it a name. All pseudo TB complex. And then 2267 genomes. Um, we recommend Ninja NJ as a fast method that gives us reliable results. You have the option here, Nina, Ninja NJ, Rapid NJ, or you can do a mineral spanning tree. We tend to do everything with Ninja NJ, which is why it's the default. You don't have a choice in the scheme. You don't have a choice in the workspace. It will have 2267, but there's only 1851 nodes. That's the number of HC0 STs there are. Others are sharing HC0 STs, and that's why there's less nodes and strains. If you do submit and Entrobase doesn't complain, it will give you this window. The tree is being calculated. And you do OK. Um, where does it save the tree? It saves the tree in workspace. So even though it is not a workspace, it also saves trees in workspace. It also saves user-defined fields in workspace. It also uh, saves custom views in workspace. So if we look in here, you have to go to load, workspace load. And you can do a search here. So I'm going to do 2021. Um,
Interesting. It's failed, German. What's happening here is we're having problems with Entrobase. Let me disable the second server for a moment. Okay. How long will it take you? It will, it will, it will take a while, so you can keep going. Instead of wait, while German is trying to do that, let me show you what German has already set up for you, which I think uh, would make sense. And this will explain buddies and how this works. So yesterday he declared many of you as his buddies. If we go back to workspace, no, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this. Now that we have this window with 2267 uh, pseudo TVs, it will be useful to come back to it. So I'm going to save this now. Workspace, save as. Um, and I'm going to give it a name that I can remember later. Um, this is uh, pseudo TB complex 2267 strains 2021 minus 05 minus 26. Okay, save. Um, if I now look at workspace load, this is 2021, here we go. This is the tree because it has the symbol and this is the workspace, which looks like a workspace. So if you want to see the workspace, you click on this and you do load. And if you want to see the tree, you do load and here it is, this is the tree. If you double click on this or load, it will open a window and show you the tree. There it goes. This is the pseudo TV complex in a grape tree with Ninja and J. Now, this is just to tell you where we are. We can go here. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going too fast. Right click on the key legend. Choose color by species. This is all pestis on an NJ tree. This is all pseudo TV and this um, is the Korean group. Oh, interesting. What I'm not seeing here Um, here's Walter C. Okay. Here's Walter Z. Where's Symbolus? Here it is. If you do a right click and click with left button on select related nodes, those are Symbolus. Double click and it goes away. Do a right click on Korean group. Select related nodes. Now, according to the NJ tree, many of these Korean groups are in here, but there's one in there. I'm not sure what to make of this. German, no, why are... no it's, because, it's because uh, there are two uh, they overlap, overlap between each other. They overlap with each other? Yes. Uh, well, when we do test, if you go to tree layout, uh, Tree layout. Do a one percent Tree layout. Branch. Branch. Branch style. Yeah, and then one percent Scaling. Yeah, one percent, and then static redraw. What do you hear? And then go and then back, go back to, to 100%, 300. 300.
Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is one of the magic tricks that German knows about and nobody knows about. It's not documented. Um, and, but just to make our life simpler, these are already selected. Just let me show you this again now. And Mogan's had trouble with this, so you should need to try this yourself. If you do shift, click, so when you do shift, it turns into this um, plus symbol. Shift turns to the plus symbol, click and pull the box. It selects everything in there. If you double click, it goes away. You can also do a right click and unselect all things like that. There's all sorts of stuff on the right button. But I'm now selecting everything that is in here, all these nodes, which are uh, things that are either similar or Wildery, and then do a right click and go to show selected subtrees. Can you people see that? Yep. And now this looks lousy. So you do another right click and you do a static redraw again. This still looks lousy because the dots are too small. So we make this 500% for node size. And suddenly we have similars being these blue ones and the Korean group being the light blue ones and water Z and Korean group being intermixed. So sometimes they were called water, water Z and sometimes they were called Korean group. So there are two different groups in here. Is everybody convinced? Yeah. He's nodding his head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So now that we've cleared this up, now we can go back. Show whole tree on their show selected trees. It's on the right click. Um, okay. And blue is pestis, light blue is pseudo TB, and this stuff over here is what we were just looking at. Now this is a neighbor joining tree. It's not an ML tree, it's not phylogenetically meaningful, but it shows you uh, the clustering. Um, you can expand with um, the uh, scroll um, um, wheel on a mouse, and this will let you focus in on things that are cleaner. So I'm here. I now get this um, four-way uh, arrow, and if I click at that point, I can move things. Um, the length can't be changed, but you can change the orientation. Okay. Um, and same thing here. Unfortunately, there's no way to do this automatically. So we spend a lot of our time just manually manipulating things like this. But what will make things better is we make node size a bit smaller. Okay, and so basically I've, I've just been focusing in on these other things here. Um, and so you, if you're in this window and you want to um, make a, a graphic representation, once you've cleaned up things like this, um, you can download an SVG. This is under export. So you can download an SVG and then convert that with graphic tools into a PDF or whatever you want. You can download the tree itself as a Newark tree and put that into fig tree or anything else you want. Or you can save this and open it in standalone grape tree, in which case you are saving all the metadata as well. Standalone grape tree, you can find that uh, in GitHub. 
um, if you have coordinates in there, GPS coordinates or something, you can also transfer it all to MicroReact, where you can work with uh, maps at the same time as you're working with trees. So that's what these things are. Um, what you can also do is, so if we look at what data we have available here, all we have is metadata. I'll show that to you again now. Color by, color by, by default, has the ST number, that's the um, uh, ST number, the accession number, the region, bio group, all this standard metadata. What it doesn't have is any of the experimental data, but you can import them. You go into Entrobase, you do import fields over at the left. This is all on the left menu here, import fields. And you can import either experimental data at the top or user-defined fields. And so this is where user-defined fields get really useful. To remind you, user-defined fields are private information. Um, they're private to you and your buddies. It's a text field that you can use as if it were a text field in Excel. You can change it in Excel if you download uh, the user-defined field. Um, it's just another experimental field. Uh, you can upload it back into Entrobase, so you can change it that way as well. Or you can do your calculations in Excel or whatever and upload it that way. Basically, you can color this by anything you want using user-defined fields and share those with your buddies. So this starts making this a much more flexible system than if you're dependent only on the standard metadata. Um, for the moment, uh, what I was going to do was I was going to upload some of the CGMLST data. So you click on experiment CGMLST and we pulled them in at 1490. Let's look at HC600, which I said was CGST complex. And now you do add. Having done this, it goes off to Entrobase. It gets that data from Entrobase and brings it all in um, and color codes by it. And if you save it over here on the left, under Entrobase, save it, that will be there the next time you open this window. Um, and so this is now color coded by HC600. Uh, so if you do select related nodes, all of these blue things are selected. Interestingly, these, ah, what's going on here? They're white because there weren't enough of them. We have a default of 30. So I'm going to increase the number of groups to 60. Sorry. And suddenly we have colors for everything. Okay. So these are pestis. Who are these guys? I have never done this before. This is a different AC600 group than standard pestis. These guys are subdivisions in pseudo-TB. These guys are the water Z and similis that we were just talking about. Um, so all of a sudden, there's two questions. This would be the closest group of pseudo-TB to pestis. These are probably weird pestis from ancient DNA or something, because we have them in here as well. Let's have a look. I've just selected all of these. I could do a subtree, but what is even simpler and more meaningful is to um, 
you either go into Entrobase or look at them in the metadata table. So in the background behind this is a second Entrobase table, like the workspace, but different. Right click, show metadata table. This has all the data in it as if it were Excel. There's 2,200 and whatever rows in here. And all the data we have available to us at the moment is in this as well. And this, if you want to look at only the selected ones, which is what we're doing here, you can click on selected only. Okay, this is ST number. This is where they're from. Nineteen seventy one to nineteen ninety nine, Russia. This is uh, this who, uh, likely lab contact very bad, you know, done by four five four. Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Russia. Coordinates. They're past this. Just to know the seconds by 454. Okay, so German says he doesn't believe them. Where's comment here, German? Do we not have any information from the original? You know what? Let's go back to the original data. That's the, I'm going to close this. They're still selected. The easiest way now is do load selected up here at the left. And that brings you back with these things in the workspace in Entrobase. Okay, so what do we know about these? This lets you go straight to our uh, gene bank. I don't know what these are. I never thought of it, but Jeremy's saying they're bad genomes. Um, okay, uh, but I'm trying to teach you how to use Entrobase. Um, now that I have this tree, which I've just saved, somewhere, Save just to be sure. I'm going to get out and give it to you. So, um, intro base, intro, where is this? Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm now going to send this tree to all of you. We've got, who wants to have this? Cyril, you want to have that tree? Yeah, sure. Please. Okay. Mikhail, you want it? Yes. Javier? Yes, please. Okay. So I go to Cyril, who I already have as one of uh, my buddies. I do add. I'm going to give you the rights to this here. Um, add. I'm going to do what I did before 2021. I'm going to give you both of them. The workspace, which is misspelled, share. And another add. And this one, share. Um, and you will now get an email, which will be difficult to understand saying you have been, I have shared something with you. I'll show you in a moment how you access it. I'm going to add this to Mikhail. Share, uh, add, share, have yay, add, share, add, share. 
I'm going to add Guillem as um, a friend, as a buddy. Add, okay, give him rights. Give Javier rights. Okay, add. So, I've shared this with all of you now. Um, so you will get an email saying that you uh, have been given these rights. Um, let us see how you would access them. Um, you would go into load workspace. So this is the same menu we had before, but we're not going into the workspace itself. And you would go into shared. Mine is what I did. You have a mine, but it's what you did. Shared is what somebody shared with you. Under there, you should see an M Achtman. And the things I have just shared with you are under there. But in this case, what you need to focus on is what German has shared with you, which is this super tree. Actually, he shared the whole folder with you. Your city is 2021 HC5. And he shared it with me as well. So I find him on the Zemin, Yersinia, and then it's this one, which is a super tree, and this one, which is the presence tree. You can also just use these numbers. There's a unique number for each tree in each workspace. He shared these with you. Let us look at what this is. This is a super tree of all Yersinia. And so you can load this just like I can load. And this will be good if you were to do this on your own computer and make sure it works for you. It works. Wonderful. Great. Now, I think we should stop at this point because this has been a huge amount of information. And then Laura can share a link with you if you want to look at this again. But basically, this is our super tree on uh, all of your cinea. This is the pseudo TB stuff down at the bottom, color coded by species. This is the Antrochlitica. Uh, super tree. This is um, actually, it's a backstone likelihood tree. And, and so I would say we should stop at this point because German has shared these two trees with you. This is one of them. And the other one is um, your city. Where is your city here? Um, the other one is this uh, maximum likelihood tree, or sorry, presence absence tree, um, which is also this workspace you can load under shared German, and it's down here. Um, called presence absence. Um, and so this is based on the whole genome. He did a pan genome of all of this. And uh, if we do species, <clears throat> this is again, um, the Antrochlitica and the whole genome, accessory genome is also splitting this into multiple clusters. And this is again, all the pseudo TB complex. No, this is pseudo TB complex. Um, this is pseudo TB, pestis, uh, similis, uh, and Walteri. So based on the accessory genome, this would be four species and this would um, be also before species. 
So again, it doesn't match with A and I um, that well. Um, and all the others tend to be uh, independent uh, clusters of their own based on the uh, entire band genome. So these are problems we're having in every single genus. They're, they're simply not taxonomically consistent. And I'm starting to talk to ecologists about this and the whole question of how one does taxonomy. Um, but it's something that I think the Yersini experts are gonna have to decide for themselves. And so these trees give you a chance to look at the data. Shall we stop at this point? This ran much longer than, it, than I'd hoped. It's 1140 here now, 1240 in, in France and much later in, in, in China. Uh, but if there's questions, go ahead and pose them now. Okay, what we haven't shown you is how to upload large numbers of short reads of your own. And I don't know how to do that, but who does it all the time is uh, Francois Xavier Vosby. And they're putting thousands of genomes into Entrobase all the time mm -hmm. from Escherichia and from Salmonella. And it might be simplest if you just talk to them about how they are doing this because it's set up to do uploads of thousands of short reads. Now we're trying to develop a new front end, which will run at the pastor as well. Um, and so you can do your assemblies locally and not be dependent on entropies for the assemblies. Um, and then it just uploads the assembled genomes instead of the short reads. Um, but it is not ready uh, yet. We're still in development phase on that. Right. Okay. So I'd say let's stop now. It's been great talking to all of you. That's okay. perfect. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Okay. okay. Have a good day to everybody. You too. Thank you. Bye bye. bye. bye.